Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you may remember a video I posted a couple of weeks ago where I took all my bikes out for a ride after a bit of a layup and it turned out I had a bit of a problem with this one in that the shock absorber had let go and spilled oil all over the deck. Now that video got loads of interest and loads of people sent me lots of advice, some of which I've ignored. However, I do intend to follow some of it today and that is to replace these shocks with uh, something brand new. So uh, hopefully not only will it fix the uh, oil leaking problem, but it may make the bike handle a little bit better as well. So if you're interested in upgrading the shocks on your bike, stick around and stay tuned. You may find this of interest. Okay, so following that last video, I had plenty of advice, as I say, including to swap the shocks out, which is kind of what I intended to do anyway. Uh, lots of people said I should replace the uh, shocks I had on the Enfield with Olin's. I just thought that was a bit of overkill for this bike. It is not a performance bike. It doesn't need Olin shocks, uh, and they're super expensive, of course. Uh, lots of people mentioned YSS shocks, Maxton, Maxton shocks as well. But in the end, I opted for these from British company Hagen. Uh, these turned up a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of days ago, I should say, and they look like this. There we go, what a beauty. So those are what I'm gonna to fit today. So these uh, Hagen shocks, I just uh, felt offered a great balance of uh, potential performance because lots of people recommended these against price. Uh, now in terms of pricing, these cost me, I've got the invoice here somewhere. These cost me 276 pounds for a pair, which I thought was pretty reasonable price for these actually, because they're supposed to be pretty good. And I have to say, the guys at Hagon, super helpful. Uh, I gave them a ring, I told them the situation, what was going on. They recommended this particular type of shock. This, by the way, is called a, we're just looking at the invoice, I don't know what it's called, but it's part number 36016TTSAB. That's 36016TTSAB is the part number, and it describes it here as a 14 by 22, 10 by 22 LRSA 18214B pair. Anyway, whatever, the guys at Hagen, very helpful, they recommend it, and no, I didn't say I was a YouTuber, no, I didn't say I was making a YouTube video or anything like that, uh, just really helpful guys. Anyway, they make them to order, they set them up to your weight, which is brilliant, and uh, they, these came after about two weeks after the phone call, so right, without further do let's stick them on see what happens so just before we get to the fitting as you may know i'm a bit of a technical numpty so what i did think was i could take the new shocks down to my mate nigel up at motor tune in chesham get him to fit them but that would include that would involve me either putting on a trailer or getting it in a van or something uh, or indeed uh, riding it up on these shocks and already got enough grief for riding this knowingly with uh, with the dodgy shocks i didn't want to do that so thought i'd do it myself how hard can it be it's only two bolts per side as it turns out it can be pretty hard First off, let's loosen these puppies. There's uh, one bolt here and an Allen bolt here. So uh, I'm not gonna obviously take them all the way off because they are supporting the bike. I'm just gonna loosen them so that when I get it on the jack, uh, I, you know, I'm not forcing bolts and, and it, the bike's unstable. So let's do that. Bit of brute force required. To see why you need to loosen them before we get it up on the stand. Two. All right, that's some loosened off. Let's get it on the little jack to take the weight just slightly off the wheel. Right, the jack is just taking the weight off the wheel now. The wheel doesn't move around. I don't want it obviously to decompress too much. I want it just in the neutral position. So I think we're good there. All right, so let's stick this on. Somebody did mention on an Instagram post where I showed this uh, shock that I should take the sticker off. So I'm not too sure whether I should or not actually. I don't mind it on there. I think I'll leave it for now. Um, and it's interesting to note as well, that if you look at this shock, it does go on that way with the writing in the right direction. Uh, the actual um, cylinder itself containing the oil is at the bottom, whereas on this shock, it's at the top. So this one's more kind of prone for leaking down, isn't it, if you think about it? Anyway, that's gonna go on there. That's the plan, let's crack on. Right, what I've got to really hope is that the uh, replacement shocks are exactly the same length as this, otherwise I might have problems getting it on, but let's see. That washer's safe. Now, I know what you're thinking, you take the brake caliper off, so you've got a bit of room to manoeuvre that out. Well, let's, that would probably make sense. Oh, 
I know, got away with it. Okay, that's that one off. Right, problem. There's always a problem with these things. They're always harder than they look, aren't they? Looking at this closely, it looks like this ear has got a little bit of a bigger eye than that. They've each got like a rubber bung thing in there can you see and looking at this post up here it looks like there's a little brass um, collar been put on there to make it up to uh, fit the size of this shock so what i need to do is try and get that brass collar off maybe give it a bit of heat and then just pull her off and hopefully that one will go on a bit easier so let's give that a try come on there we go right try again right is she going to go in this time Need a little bit of coaxing. <coughs> Sometimes a bit of brute force is required. Let's just loosely put that in there, keep it in place. Right, what a faff getting this bottom one to a line. Bit of a head scratch. All right, it's so close, we just need to get a bit of, a little bit of alignment on there without destroying these cables. I should have done the other side first, really, because then I would have got this alignment better. I wouldn't have had to do this. I think I've got to Oh, what a pain. Right, I'll talk that up in a sec, but in the end, I did manage to get that moved up enough by leaving a screwdriver in there and just lifting it up. So the shock's on, just need to torque her up now. Phew, right, I'll do the other side. Hopefully it'll be a little bit easier. I haven't got the brake cables and so on in the way for this one. So it should be just a straightforward swap out and then uh, we'll see what they look like once I'm done. I won't film this because it'll be the same, only easier, let's say. don't want to do. So with my hand fistedness I've managed to scratch the swing arm exactly what I was trying not to do. Right let's get a scratching again. All right try as I might I cannot get that bolt, which is supposed to be the easy side, to line up and go through there. I don't want to muller the thread on it. I've tried everything I can, wedging things in. I've already put a scratch on the swing arm. I don't want to mess it up anymore. I think I'm gonna to have to call the experts in. I'm gonna give Nigel a call, see if he can pop over and uh, work his magic. Nigel, mate, it's Andy. Hi, yeah. Yeah, good, thanks, yeah. Got a bit of a problem, hoping you might be able to help me. Right, so your saviour has, has turned up. Nigel's here, you'll recognise him from the workshop. Thank you, Nigel, for coming in. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Andy. So uh, basically, what's the, the magic answer is to keep, to keep doing what I was doing, I think, wasn't it? You weren't far away. Yeah. You weren't far away, yeah. just, it just lacked... That, bit of finesse? Bit of finesse might be the right word. All right, let's see then, let's see how this works. Uh, Bear with us, folks. I'm, I'm fitting it the opposite way to what you did. Because uh, threading it is much harder to do Yep. when things don't line up sure. because obviously a thread has got to be perfect sure whereas this we've got a rubber grommet and you could whack it one which we can compress slightly that's a very good point actually if only i thought of that that makes complete yeah. sense yeah and this way we won't do any more damage yeah, oh, yeah, yeah thanks for that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah a little bit of paint work to be done there how close are we talking a smidgen Cig thickness of a cigarette paper i'd say bloody nuisance isn't it so what we can do 
we can just compress that rubber slightly. Yep. I'm using Andy's tools here. <laughs> I love seeing the master at work. I even when I was making this video earlier, I said I was thinking about taking it to Nige, but how hard can it be? <laughs> it's two bolts, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. It's often the way with aftermarket parts. Oh, that looks so close. Do you want me to hold the bike in case yeah, it goes? If, we were to, if I was strong enough, I could compress that shot very slightly. Oh my goodness me, look at that! Don't get too excited. Oh, I'm very excited. Don't get too excited. It's the best it, I've it, seen it so also, far. It also wants to push the rubber out as we're doing that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Unfortunately, they're not, uh, they are haven't got a lip on them that secures them. So oh, I was got, getting so very again, excited then, that was the closest it's been. quite speed. well lined up as well, unfortunately. Look at this! It's there! Yeah. Oh, knowledge! Yeah. You've saved me life! I've spent many, many, a, many a moment trying to line up a, a thread. Oh, that is a winner! And uh, quite often you can easily uh, cross thread it as well. So well, exactly. Put I can't. Put the bolt in first. No, that's the answer, isn't it? Yeah. And even a little bit of lubricant, lubricant on there could have made the job easy. Well, that's the difference between a professional and a rank amateur. <laughs> oh. What a winner. Well, well I've got a torque wrench here somewhere. Something. Well, I have learnt something. Never to put shocks on myself, but to call <laughs> you in. Next time, I should just bring it to you. Brilliant. Now you know. <laughs> Brill. Thank you so much, All Norwich. Right. Oh, you're a lifesaver. You Thank you. God, let me open the door for you. Well, how exciting. It just shows you, doesn't it? If you've got a bit of know-how, a bit of experience, and you can make these things work. I was fiddling around with that for probably an hour, getting nowhere. But uh, who knew? Fit the bottom in first, and then you can use the compression in the rubber at the top to fit it. Right, I'll just torque them up, and then uh, get my gear on, and we'll go for a ride, see how they feel. Right, now she's on solid ground, I can torque these up to 25 Newton metres. They don't have to be super tight because uh, these are on welded on posts. Uh, so it's not actually taking the force in that way, if you see what I mean, it really just holds them in place. Anyway, I'll get that done now. Two. Right, final job. Little tip from Dale Boy, just put some of Mrs. Fly's uh, nail polish just next to the bolt there onto the uh, shock or onto the frame, just so we can see if they do move. Just a tiny dot, I can just check from time to time to make sure there is no movement. Right, as it turns out, no such thing as a simple job is there on a bike. But anyway, we're all sorted now. Happy that uh, that's a safe install. I'm going to go and give a ride, see if I feel any difference. Let me get my uh, butt riding kit on. We'll go for a ride and we'll see how they feel. So, just enough light left to do a bit of a road test on the new shocks. A job that uh, I thought was going to take me an hour, a couple of hours tops. Ended up taking me basically all day with uh, Nigel to the rescue. Now, I've been on the bike uh, all of... I don't know, 10 minutes, and I have to say, what an incredible transformation. Even the seat feels more comfortable than it did before. These roads around here are absolutely shocking at the moment. Covered in potholes and ruts, really bumpy. And I tell you, this bike just feels like a different animal. It's just added an air of quality to the ride. And these holes. It feels planted at the back end now. There's no feeling of bottoming out, which is kind of what I used to have. It now actually feels like a good handling bike. I don't think I was, uh, would ever accuse the Royal Enfield of feeling like that before. It's an absolute winner. So for anyone contemplating fitting uh, some aftermarket shocks on your Royal Enfield interceptor or other bike, and I can heartily recommend those Hagen shocks. They are absolutely amazing. As I say, 267 quid, I think they cost me, and it has absolutely transformed the bike. It is a brilliant upgrade. All right, I had a right load of hassle fitting them in the end because of my ineptitude mechanically, but uh, thanks to uh, my hero, Nigel, it all worked out well in the end. So I must say, massive thanks to everybody that recommended the Hagen shocks to me. Turns out they're flipping brilliant. I cannot ride, wait to ride this bike some more this summer. Now the weather's starting to turn. Massive thanks uh, to you for watching the video once again. 
And of course, the biggest thanks has to be for my knight in shining armour, Nigel from Moto Tune in Chesham. The best workshop in Buckinghamshire for bikes. If you've got any issues on your bike that need sorting out, give Nigel a call, tell him I sent you. I'm sure he will sort you out. What a winner. Well, all's well that ends well and all that, eh? All right, that's it for this time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so before. Hit the like, share, all that kind of stuff. I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.